In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to order, 3D print, build, and configure your Kibio Iris Rev 8. If you don't have a 3D printer, don't worry. I will thoroughly walk through the options on the order page. First, let's head to the Kibio page to order our parts. The link is in the show notes. I wouldn't normally show the ordering process, but there are a lot of confusing options, especially if you are relatively new to building keyboards. The plate kit determines what the top and bottom of the keyboard will look like. If you will be 3D printing your parts, then set the plate kit to none. Otherwise, choose whichever plate kit you like the look of. The FR4 option is basically PCB material painted black. The B-Stock options are cheaper because they are slightly scuffed or scratched. The middle layer is optional and determines what the sides of the keyboard will look like. Again, if you are 3D printing your parts, leave this option alone. The tented option has screw holes on the sides for adding optional tenting support. Tenting allows the keyboard to be tilted to reduce wrist strain. The switches are the actual mechanical part of your keys. The Iris Reverend 8 PCB board has per key RGB lighting. So to get the most out of this lighting, you want to buy clear or translucent switches. The Iris order page only has three switch options. The Duroc Shrimp switches are translucent with a teal tint. They have a tactile feel and are mostly silent. The Duroc Dolphin switches are clear and have a smooth, silent motion. The Duroc Sunflower switches are tactile and clicky, but are completely opaque, so not the best option for the iris lighting. Personally, I decided to buy Duroc Clear Tactile switches from Amazon. You can find the link in the show notes. If you do decide to buy switches outside of the Kibio website, just make sure you buy MX-compatible 5-pin switches. Keycaps are the plastic part of each key that your finger comes in contact with. The order page does not have a great selection of keycaps, but you don't need to buy them from Kibio. You just need to make sure you choose MX compatible keycaps. I already had a keyboard that had shine through keycaps, so I just decided to reuse them for this project. If you want four separate keys per thumb like I am using in this video, then don't worry about the thumb stabilizers. Just for reference, 1U keys are normal size keys like your A through Z keys. 2U keys are double wide keys like a standard shift key. The keyboard we are building today uses all 1U keys, so it doesn't need any kind of thumb stabilizer. For the cable option, any USB-C to USB-C cable will work. This connects the left and right hand keyboards together. The coiled cables from Kibio are a nice option. You will also need a longer USB-C cable to go from the keyboard to your computer. The scuff rubber feet are good to make sure the keyboard doesn't slide around on your desk. Also make sure to check the box to add the silicone hot swap PCB bumpers. These will give the PCB board more support and especially for the stainless steel option, will prevent the PCB board from touching things that it shouldn't. Add to cart, but don't check out yet. If you are 3D printing your parts, you will also need to add screws and standoffs. You'll need two bags of six millimeter screws and one bag of 10 millimeter standoffs. If you are buying a plate kit from Kibio, these are included, so you won't need to purchase these separately. Complete your order. Okay, enough about the ordering process. Let's get to the 3D printing. You can find all of the STL files in the show notes. The left and right side are just mirror images of each other, but I included them for easier printing. I printed everything with 0.1 millimeter layer thickness and 100% infill, but you can probably get away with 0.2 millimeter layer thickness. For the top and bottom plates, I wouldn't reduce the infill because you want these to be solid. Changing the infill percentage and pattern on the middle layer can have some cool results if you are using a translucent filament. No supports are needed, but I like to use a brim for better bed adhesion. I chose to print my top and bottom plates with standard black PLA and my middle layer with translucent PLA, which you can find in the show notes. I've also included a sample keycap STL that I printed with the same translucent PLA for all of my modifier and function keys. To build the keyboard, start with one of the top plates. We'll start with the left side. Insert each switch with the plastic pins going horizontally and the metal pins below. Test the orientation of one of the switches on your PCB board first before inserting onto your plate. You'll notice that each switch has two small clips. You should hear a satisfying click when you push each switch into the top plate. Repeat the process for all of the remaining switches. All of the switches are in the same orientation except the two outermost thumb switches, which are flipped, so make sure you check these two switches carefully. Once you have all of the switches in place, check all of the metal pins to make sure they are not bent. The first time I did this, my M key wasn't working and I had to take the whole thing apart, so it will save you some time to check all of the pins now. Next, align the PCB board perfectly with the switches in the top plate. Once everything is lined up, press firmly on the top of each switch and right under the switch on the other side of the PCB for support. Do this for each switch. 
until the board is flush with all of the switches. It doesn't take much force, so if it doesn't sit flush, then one of your pins is probably bent. Next, place each of the silicone hot swap PCB bumpers on the back of the PCB board. There are gold colored circles where these should be placed plus one in the center, six for each half keyboard. After that, insert the M2 screws through the top plate and twist in until they slightly protrude from the other side. Before we go any further, let's test to make sure all of the switches are in place. Plug this half of the keyboard into your computer and navigate to VIA Configurator. You can find the link in the show notes. The VIA Configurator website only works with Chrome and Edge, so if you use a different browser, you'll have to download the VIA app. I've included a link to the releases page in the show notes. Press the key tester button and enable the test matrix option. Press each key and you should hear an audible noise and see which key was pressed. If there is a key that doesn't work, most likely the pins are bent on that switch. Unplug the keyboard, remove that switch and check for a bent pin. Repeat as necessary. After everything looks good, unplug the keyboard and we can proceed with the build. Insert all of the standoffs into the holes in the middle layer. Line up the middle layer with the flat side down and make sure the USB-C ports are seated. Then gently tighten the screws, making sure they line up with the standoffs in the middle layer. Next, align the ridge on your bottom plate with the middle layer. Insert more M2 screws through the bottom plate and gently screw them into the bottom of the standoffs. Once everything is done, tighten all of the screws gently. Too much force will crack the plates. You can now add all of your keycaps in the appropriate positions. Repeat the whole process for the right side of the keyboard. Connect the two halves using the short USB-C to USB-C cable. Connect one of the halves to your computer with a longer USB-C cable. Let's open up via configurator again and test the whole keyboard one more time. Now you can customize each key and create your layers. The iris uses what are called layers to allow you to program each key differently when the modifier keys are pressed. This allows you to have the capabilities of a full-size keyboard with only 56 keys. You can configure any key on the keyboard with a myriad of different options. There are your basic keys, media keys for controlling music and videos, macro keys for activating macros, layer keys for switching between layers, special keys that can do some pretty interesting things, including move your mouse. There are also keys to allow you to control the keyboard lighting from the keyboard itself. In addition to configuring each key, you can write custom macros as well. There is a handy record macro feature, which makes the whole process super easy. Via Configurator is not only used to configure your keyboard's functionality, but also its appearance. Click the lighting button and try some of the options until you find one you like. There are so many different ways to configure your new keyboard, so take some time to read the VIA documentation. Building your own keyboard can be a really fun project, and I think the end result is pretty sweet. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like this in the future.